Schultz, yeah. you know, I, you had you, you had Dana White on your podcast recently. Yeah. I, I, usually yeah. when Dana's on a pod, I know most of it, right? Like I'm in the business, so I usually won't listen. <laughs> Yo, this passive aggressive stuff is odd. What the fuck is that? You had Dana on the hey, pod. Rinks. You've spent time, you know, in like as per I your don't bio. really listen. Wouldn't you know? Then. That babies over there are just baby until 40 days Humble after brag. when they're baptized and named. Like, or are you just too anti woke to remember? This is, okay, I don't know. What an odd way. Anyway. But I, I had to listen to yours. I listened to the whole thing. I was, you know, this. I'm a huge fan of the show. Oh, so yeah. I listened to the whole thing. I enjoyed it because, especially your perspective of things that ask some certain questions. But I thought for sure you were going to be the guy when Dana goes. Yeah, Slap Fight has more followers than Real Madrid. I thought 100% you or the boys would be like, well, Dana, and it, it's not Dana's fault. Like, I think someone told him that, and he's just, you know, he's 50. He doesn't. Dana White knows that's not true. He's saying that because he's a promoter. His business, his occupation is to talk shit, is to embellish, is to exaggerate. Promoter doing promoter things, isn't it? No, yeah. I thought for sure he'd be yeah. like, but that, it, that's not real. So he got, he he brought it on the pod. You can see it on the pod. He has this like list of, uh, you know, basically like um, uh, statistics of the success of slap, uh, slap fighting or whatever it's called. Yeah, slap boxing. Fighting. Yeah, slap fighting. Slap fighting. And, uh, slap and, fighting. Uh, and I think what I assume it is, is that the show gets insane ratings online. It's impossible to, to keep scrolling while two people are about to slap each other. Agreed. That's like not physically possible, right? <laughs> so you're going to get more views than like a soccer, a cool goal, or like a random picture of Ronaldo or some shit like that. But there's no way that the league has more followers than Real Madrid. Correct. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. of course, that's not going to happen. But what's really interesting, and I don't know if he was talking about this on the pod or afterwards, but like the entire story of UFC, and I, I don't know if this was pre-pod or after the pod or during the pod that he was talking about this, but like everything, every I get why he's so bullish on, on slap fighting. Me too. Because everybody, the things that people said about the UFC the entire time they were building it are the exact things that people say about slap fighting. Yep. Oh, this is grotesque. This is brutal. These are just destroying these people. Who are these guys? They're a bunch of guys that, you know, they're, they're, they're working at fucking Home Depot. They're just dragging them out here. They're, but like everything they used to say about early days UFC. Because when I first saw the slap fighting, I told Dana, I was like, bro, I don't really get it. It's not really for me. <laughs> but every time it comes up on my Instagram, I'm watching that shit every <laughs> single time. Me too. Really? Shit. I yeah. can't really, I oh. can't really, I, for me, it doesn't. But have I you ever that, watched it be like, really, like I, I was super pretty yeah. outspoken, like what? <laughs> he doesn't give a single fuck. I don't know what that answer was. I don't know what he said. He dropped his phone halfway. His wife is now in the room. The community, like, he doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> this is pure charity. <laughs> And I don't even know what they're talking about this also. It's a one fan's episode. Like, wouldn't it be like a, oh my God, you remember the first time we met each other? Oh yeah, do you remember I introduced you to Rogan? Oh, your first show. Why are they even talking about this anyway? Why are they even talking about this? Why are they even talking about this? Look at him. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's having a whole conversation with his wife. <laughs> he doesn't want to be there. <laughs> oh, big up. <laughs> Their relation, honestly, I don't know about you guys, right? I would rather be lonely. I'm not going to lie. I would rather be lonely than have these type of friendship. Because you almost, you, you almost have to always pretend that you're cool when you're not. For whatever reason, we don't know why they're not cool. Maybe there's distance there. Maybe success as well is a bit in there. You know, Schultz, is, Schultz like came on being their friend, then became Rogan's friend through them. And now his career has gone through the fucking, you know, roof. So maybe there's a, it's a bit awkward in that way. But you just, <laughs> you have to keep up the appearances of like, <laughs> it's so, <laughs> you're such an afterthought. Like, Schultz's, Schultz's life does, he probably doesn't even think about these guys at all, ever. You know, like, oh, I don't know, man. It, it must be so sad, man. Part of me kind of feels bad for them. I'm not going to lie. I can't help but not feel bad for these guys. What the hell are we doing? My only issue, and like, I don't doubt Dana, right? The guy hits home runs. All he does is hit home runs. Hold on, hold on one second. Big up Asad Aziz. Stop acting like you choose to be lonely. <laughs> <laughs>
that's actually a good point. I'm acting as if I have a choice, you know, to have friends. Maybe they made the choice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe they made the choice maybe they're like you know what I'm all set <laughs> I'm all set on that guy named after a month and a fucking burger oh fucking hell big up Assad <laughs> what's that oh no sorry go go, go. Uh, sorry. <laughs> He didn't have to do that. <laughs> no, so you continue your nonsense, your nonsense fucking conversation. Oh my god, bro, he doesn't give a fuck about being there. And all, all Dana does is to, to all he does is hit home runs. He knocks yeah. it out of the park every time. So I'm not doubting that. He nearly yawned there. He nearly yawned. He nearly yawned. He nearly yawned. He wants to hang out with his wife. He actually loves his wife. He talks about her all the time. He really loves his kid. He's always talking about his new kid. He actually wants to be in his family. He does not want to be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> he nearly yawned. Oh, Hold shit. Hold on a second. What's that? Oh. No, sorry. Go, go, go. I, I said all, all Dana does is to, to, all he does is hit home runs. He knocks yeah. it out of the park every time. Yawned. He nearly yawned. So I'm not yawned, doubting man. that. My issue was with the whole slap fight thing is it was on the UFC feed. So they were pushing the narrative of, it, hey, all you guys are going to like slap fight if you like UFC. And I'm like, do your thing, but don't force it on me, if that makes sense. Like, just have it its yo, own thing. Yo, yo, when you when you just going to be like, my bad, Dana. I've already Invite done that. Invite me back to the shows. Invite me. I, <laughs> Invite me. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, short C. That is what I wanted to hear. Look at Brendan's face when he gets confronted. Look at his face. Go on, short C. There we go. Let's rewind it back. That's a good one. He just cut for the shit. Come on, Schultz. On me, if that makes sense. Like, just have it yo, its own thing. Yo, yo, when you when you just gonna be like, my bad, Dana. I've already Invite done that. Invite me back to the shows. Invite me. I, <laughs> Invite me back to the UFC. No, events. no, we're good, My brother. Bad, no, you're not, you're no, not we good. Are, no, we're good. <laughs> you're not good. You're not good. You're not good. That's the thing. You keep saying that. Dana doesn't like you. You keep saying we're good. You're not good. It's that's kind of toxic as well, by the way. When you have a problem with somebody, but they keep acting like you don't, or they keep saying you don't. No, you know we don't like each other. So I'm saying we're cool. We're not cool. <laughs> we're good, bro. I'm driving the wedge. Bro. No, not at all. <laughs> no, people think the... that. No, me and Yo, Dana are good. Just go, just go, just go. My bad, bro. You know what I mean? No. I want to go to the fights. I want to sit up there. You see what I said about you about the hating about ninja hating. I think you should hate with your chest. Hating full K. Hate in HD because when you don't, you end up like Brendan. Brendan can't decide if he wants to be Dana's friend, Dana's enemy, Dana's ally, Dana's colleague. Yeah, you know I mean, he doesn't know what to do. So one minute he's fucking trying to lick up to Brent to Dana. Next minute he's fucking dissecting and micro analyzing the statistics of slap fight, which doesn't matter. Next minute he's calling out UFC for their fight picks. Next time he's saying, "Oh, UFC 300 was fucking amazing." Like he's. He's always swinging, you know what I mean? Going back and forth. There with the boys. You know what I mean? I want to watch the Kiss the, the ring. Like, kiss the ring. You, you know, yeah, kiss the exactly. ring. It's like, bro, the second, like, and that's why I want to learn the whole story. And, I, and also, I also think part of me thinks this. This is this is just something I want to throw out here from being an old school T5K fan. In the beginning, Brendan had every reason to hate Dana. The same reason why journalists hate Dana and the same reason why fans hate Dana. Because the UFC is run like a bit of a mafia. They bully fighters. They don't pay them well. They mistreat champions. They usually take the piss out of and really mistreat fighters who don't put on quote unquote fun fights. It's really, they run it a bit fucked up. So if you're a fighter, or if you're a journalist and you get close to these things and you see how it goes on, or to borrow a phrase from Brendan, you see how the sausage is made, it's pretty difficult not to dislike the UFC brass. It's pretty difficult not to like them. I think with Brendan, this is my this is just my guess, my theory. I think back when he used to hate on UFC for the Reebok deal, I don't think he knew. I don't think he could imagine the UFC would be as big as it is now. I think he probably thought deep down, eventually, when somebody buys out the UFC, they're going to fire Dana or something. I think that's what he thought. Now that the UFC is still chugging along, and Dana's more successful, more richer than he's ever been, and he's actually a main part, if not an essential linchpin of the UFC organization, he doesn't know what to do because that guy's not going anywhere anytime soon. So it's almost like 
you have to kiss the ring now because he's outlasted you and he's proved you wrong because the UFC is bigger than it's ever been. Him and Joe Rogan are friends. If Dana can't be cordial with Brendan because of his love for Rogan, he's never going to be cordial with him. Because when you learn the whole story of things, you have a lot different perspective. Yes. I was like, what the fuck is the real story of the UFC? When I find out they're 40 million in debt, like 40 right million. Right now? Right now? No, 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 no. In the early days. It was like 12 right. billion right now. Right, right. They, they they funded the fighter show themselves, the ultimate Don't fighter themselves. They put all the money up themselves because the network wouldn't fucking put it up. Yep. Like the amount of times, now granted, they have an investment fund, but investment funds have to show, the fortunas have to yeah. show return. You mm -hmm. can't just keep dumping money into some shit that everybody says that you're an absolute lunatic for doing. Right. So the fact that they put that much in, that much time, blood, sweat, and tears, like I get it, like it, it's a, you have a different perspective for it. Well, he, all you he, need to do is a, just say, my bad. Yeah, he, and then no, you no, get to go to the shows again. No, show Yo, big up uh, Al Bizu. I would love to see Brendan show up to UFC event and get booed. It's going to be worse than that, brother. Like, I'm sorry. I don't like Dana for his business and the way he treats the fighters and for the lack of pay and shit. I fucking despise it. I think having fighters who are in overdraft and who, you know, are making fucking 20 grand so they have to fight six times a year. But if they fight six times a year, they're prone to lose. And if you lose, you don't get more matches. I think it's fucking abhorrent. Dana is a petty, vindictive guy. When you're his enemy, there's no way of turning that around usually. It would be worse. If Brendan was to go to a UFC event, I would be nervous for him because I would, I would have a feeling they would escort him out of that building. They'd let him sit down. They put the camera on him and he'd get security to escort him out. That's how petty Dana could be. He'd embarrass him that way. He's the kind of guy you don't cross. He's going to do like, honestly, he would have him escorted out of the building <laughs> and post about it on social media. That guy, like, once you're his enemy, you're his enemy for life. You're not going to sit front row. You're going to sit behind you. The side. It's got to work. You're going to sit with the side, in. bitches. You're going to sit with the nah, side. Nah, hey, don't, don't do me like sit. that. No, nah. well, you're going to sit up in the in the 100 area. No, you know, hell 100. no. 200. The 100. You're going to work yourself down. Nah. You're going to work yourself down. I'll put, I'll put, one, call, I'll put one call into Rogan, and he'll put me right behind him. I might get assassinated. No, but uh, me and that might happen. me and Dana are cool. Like, you're there's no cool. beef between us. Cool. Even on the UFC 300 I thing, I was cool. like, why are you bringing up old shit? You know, but I was like, respect. UFC 300 was dope. Me and him are good. Everyone thinks like the, this is oh, ongoing good. beef. I got nothing to respect for. I love, why does he keep saying that when it's not true? Didn't you expose him for cheating on his wife with Ronda Rousey? Why would he be cool with you? <laughs> what? <laughs> and again, he has every right to not like Dana. Every right to not like Dana. But why is he acting like he doesn't like, what is this? He's almost like gaslighting himself. I hey, love that. Hey, guy. Andrew, I, I want to ask you a question. As a guy who's yeah. always ahead of the trend in a way, you know, slap fighting reminds Of course, Brian Callen comes in with the save. Reminds me of the fact that, like, people's attention span is so, yeah. so short. Like, nobody's even watching a whole special. It's like, why even do an hour when you know at the end of the day? By the way, that's a lie. That's a cope Com comedians were throwing out there because no one was watching their stuff. That's a cope. People are watching our specials if you're funny. If you're not funny, they're going to tune out in the first five minutes. They, they're going to watch 20 minutes of it, maybe less, even even when you post a joke. So, like, what what do you think? Yo, Is that going to come back? What do you th I, think the Tom, I think the Tom Brady shit. Hold on, hold, hold, hold on. So people can listen to podcasts and watch live streams all day, but they can't sit down and watch a fucking special because their attention spans are short. I think that's a cope. 